Hi guys, and welcome to this week's episode of Watch These Films. I'm your host, Bianca Barnett. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Bianca, why on earth are you all tarted up like you're in some Robert Palmer video? Well, we're going back to the 80s, and the 80s was all about decadence and skanking it up and wearing too much makeup, too much hairspray, all that greatness. So the movie I'm reviewing this week is called Rock and Roll Nightmare. Now, what drew me to this movie first was the badass cover artwork. It looked like a mix of, of wrestling and science fiction and heavy metal. It had a monster and it just was like, raw. The guy was all greased up and he had this big blonde hair with bangs and makeup and, and a guitar and he's wearing a metal thong. I mean, come on, I had to check this movie out. <laughs> So apparently, this film was made in only seven days. Well, don't worry. I would never choose a flop for you. What am I, a retard? My money's on the retard. So we're back in Canada with this heavy metal group called the Tritons. It's the band, it's the manager, it's the girlfriend, and they're going to record their next album in Canada in a farmhouse. I don't understand it either, but that's where they're going to make the music happen. I know it's a stereotype to say that metalheads might not be the brightest people in the world, but I beg to differ. I think this film really, really contradicts that stereotype. I'm like the screen came from down here. You're right, let's go upstairs. So one of the guys, I think he's the drummer, for some reason, he's supposed to be Australian or British or something, I'm not sure. I think he has to have the award for the worst accent ever. It sounded something like this. Hello, mates. How about throwing another shrimp on the barbie? Hey, really, mate? What are we supposed to do here? Rehearse, lame brain. Wait, but why Canada sniveling gets not out of the bloody house? Personally, I found the story really muddled. In fact, it kind of seemed like two different stories in one. There's a band that goes to record this album, and there's drama and romance and everything else between the band. And at the same time, it's supposed to be this haunted or possessed or whatever farmhouse that this family was killed in before, and ah, I'm really confused. <laughs> I see him. Where? Something moving back there. Hey, come on out, little guy. I see. We're not gonna bite you. supposed to be cute or something I'm not really sure one looks very phallic and it had a big eyeball and it was like oozing out clear stuff at one point so I was kind of not sure what was going on there maybe I'm just a pervert I don't know partying and they're rocking out and they're drinking and they're not doing any drugs and some of them are married and some of them are drinking sprites and soda pops and what 
I did not party with these dudes. I'm sure Phil's not dead or anything, or he would have called. It reminds me of the time we were partying with Dick and Bianca, and Phil spilled the vodka martinis all over the guy from RCA Areola. <laughs> Definitely a case of shaken, not stirred. <laughs> They seemed really proud of these special effects in this movie, and I don't know, maybe it was the first time that they ever did special effects or something, but honestly, they were pretty bad and really cheesy. Oh, the finale of the film. This is definitely the best part. Maybe the only part worth watching. So here's what happens. The stage is set. We find out that John Michael Thor is actually an archangel. And he has to fight Satan. But not just Satan. He has to fight Beelzebub. And he must be on good terms with Beelzebub because he just keeps calling him Bub. And I think that's really insulting. I am Triton, the archangel. You've overstepped your line again, Bob. It is the Creator's highest law that keeps you in your dark place. And yet you and your brethren still insist on coming into this world to try and steal a place in the world of the living. When will you ever learn? This is the battle that we've been waiting for since the dawn of mankind. I'm so glad it didn't disappoint at all. The devil, or Beelzebub, or Bub, as you want to call him, is actually just some alien looking thing that's kind of cute and he just flops around like this to get you. Ah, ah, ah. This place is yours! <laughs> okay, rock and roll nightmare. I had to give it only one star. It wasn't very good at all. The storyline was muddled. The music was mediocre. The special effects they seemed really proud of, and in my opinion, they were not very good. So, sadly, I am still on the hunt for the ultimate heavy metal rock and roll horror film from the 80s. Hopefully, I will find it someday soon, but for now, I'm still looking. Thanks, guys. I'm Bianca Barnett, and I hope you will tune in next time to watch Watch These Films. complaining that I had made a mistake in episode 10 when I reviewed the Black Roses. Well, you're wrong. I don't make mistakes. Some of you thought that those were not DeLoreans that drove up and you said those are Lambos, Bianca. Well, they're not. You're wrong and I'm right. And you know why? I contacted the director and I found some unseen footage from Black Roses and here's what it looks like. See, I told you so.